strengthen for um, the rest of the day and tomorrow and for the rest of the week. And I thank you that you you uh, just guard us with your love and you, you uh, shelter us and, and uh, pick us up when, when we need it. And Father God, I thank you that you just uh, just keep us going and and uh, thank you that we are are more than more than over. We are. Thank you that we are overcomers, amen. And I thank you that uh, you are the God of more than enough. Hallelujah, amen. And we don't just barely get by, but we are, we excel in the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every praise, 
yet to come Greater things are still to be done here In this city, in this church, in our lives You know greater things Not just the things we see and have seen Oh yeah, to come, to come, to come Oh, you know greater Greater things are still to be done here Faith and victory in Greensboro City and all around the world You know that God's not done Oh, He's not done He's not done Not done Not done Go ahead, just go on and build yourself Cause he's got greater things Got greater things Got greater things for you So go on and build yourself The way you know to Dig in that water Fill yourself up Let loose and be free Cause there's greater things you know there's greater things There's, there's There's greater things There's greater things There's You know there's greater things But still to be done Be done Be done Be done so be, so be, yeah. You know there's greater things. There's greater things. So stop looking back. Turn around. Be the past where it is. You know there's greater things. You know, there's greater things to be done. backwards or anything? Must be. Okay. That's my fault. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, we got fixed. Good to see everybody. Who went here last Sunday? Back in a regular shoe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I went uh, Thursday a week ago and saw my uh, Mr. whack him off And uh, he, he released me. He's done with me. And uh, I said, I'm, I'm still going to the podiatrist. He's still doing a little stuff, but um, uh, the infectious disease doctor has released me. I'm, I'm pretty hot. And, um, huh? Okay, sure. Square centimeters. This week is point. This past week on Thursday was point three three. I mean, it is so close. I mean, we're just 
We're, we're looking at it going, you know, he sat there and talked to me for a little while on Thursday. And he just looked at me and said, you know, you ought to be a case study. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he says, you know, for whatever reason, people don't take it serious. They don't take their health serious. They don't whatever. He said, but this, this is not the normal outcome. He said, you just, you know, you ought to be a case study. I said, well, and I've told him all along, you know, that we're, we believe in God and, you know, we're trusting God. We're doing everything to say do. And, th and this has been one of those lessons in faith without works is dead. Right. You just don't go, I believe my toes heal. You just keep doing whatever you're doing and don't do anything about it. Hello. I, I was, I, my, my faith was not, I wasn't even saying my toes healed. I'm keeping my toe. All right. And, um. You know, I, I believe, without a doubt, because because he's told me, the infectious told me, the nurses told me, he didn't think it was anywhere in the world I was keeping my toe. They were going to let me try the antibiotics for a little while, but they just they were just doing that to appease me. They weren't believing that it was actually going to happen. I mean, they, they pretty much had come to the conclusion it was going to come off. Well, they had to start when he first came to the room. You know, we can do it right here. But the infectious guy goes, well, you know, I said, I'm keeping my toe. He said, you know, that was the recommendation at the hospital because it looked so bad was to, to, to take it off. And I'm like, I got my toe. Amen. Hallelujah. But this has been a journey. And, of course, in the, in the infectious guy, I mean, the podiatrist is like, you know, <laughs> he's happy for me. He's like, he's, he's a lady. He wants to use this as a case study because, you know. My, my attitude and how I approached this and everything was completely different. And uh, I got my toe. And uh, I, by the way, the infectious disease doctor told me when he released me, he says, there is no sign of active infection. So it's, there's no infection. So uh, it's all gone. I'm still on antibiotics for a few more days, and only because I'm finishing out the regimen. He told me I could quit. But um, I decided just to keep going until I run out. And, um, you know, because we're, we're, we're so close. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just don't mess with anything. So, and, um, but anyway, we're excited and we're thrilled, you know, and I'm back in shoes and wearing regular shoes all the time now. It's like, glory to God. You know, somebody asked, how long have you been in that thing? I was three months now, you know, how much longer you got to wear? I don't know. You know, just know this. Um, heal to the Lord. I said, heal to the Lord. Now, I was about to say, it is my firm belief that there was nothing to regenerate there. Uh, when they filleted that thing and got in there and started cleaning out dead tissue and I had the hole, it, I mean, you could just, it, the hole went all the way down to the bone, plus it was like laid open. And that, in the, there was a hole down into the bone. When I, when I saw that, and then it's all growing back and all filling back in, there was nothing there. It wasn't just heal it. It had to regrow. I mean, we had to completely regrow everything. Tendons, everything down in there. All the way back out to the skin surface. And um, it is, you know, well, you didn't get an instant miracle. I really don't care what I got, except I got my toe. Now, you, you young whippersnappers think you know everything about faith. You, you, you know, until you've walked a journey, you don't know anything. So, I believe it was a supernatural working of God to cause my body to regenerate, which wasn't normal for my situation. I have a miracle. I said, I have a miracle. And I'm believing you know, uh, in the next week or so, it's going to be so close. It'll be completely closed. Up. The podiatrist is going to release me. And... Uh, he, he told me keep doing the wound care until there's no more drainage. And it's getting so there's so little, but there's still some. So we're just going to keep doing what we need to do. He, he basically tries to tell me don't get cocky. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> hey, Brother Bill, I got a word for you. Don't get cocky. I'm just messing with you now. Okay. But, but you're, you're aware of this, right? That's my doctor. He's trying to tell me not to get cocky. And I'm, you know, without saying that, that's what he's telling me. And I, and I, Doc, I got it. We're doing this 
all the way to the end. We're seeing this through the goal line. And um, so, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's a hallelujah time. And, um, you know, wearing shoes. It's, it's like a, getting to walk around in regular shoes all the time instead of that, that boot thing. Yeah. Now, your daddy loves his son, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to be in that in that shoe, too. Praise the Lord. I was like, I had to go, uh, go work on money and show everybody. <laughs> hey, look at this. <laughs> oh, you're in shoes. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. We love y'all. We thank you for being with us and standing with us through this whole thing. And, you know, God is good. You know, and it's, it's taking a lot of energy. You know, you, we've been fighting the fight of faith. I mean, you know, you're, you're doing everything we're doing. It's, it's, it takes a lot. And um, so, that to say, if you haven't gotten your records yet about what you gave last year, there's a reason. I ain't done them yet. But I'm about to get it this week. We're gonna, we're, our goal is this week to get it done. It's been, a, you know, one of those things where this, the energy and the time has been other places. Yeah. You know? And, um, you know, your, your spiritual energy, your, spirit, your time just has been focused somewhere else uh, other than some things. And, um, you know, trying to make sure we're still preaching doing the Word of God, running the church, uh, doing other things, taking care of Janie, like me. You know, it's just been one of those things. It's been a, one of those journeys you had to, you kind of had to put what was in highest priority where it was and get to the other one you can get to it. Okay? So, we forgot you. All right. Well, good to have everybody this morning. Praise the Lord. Those of you who join us on Facebook Live, you didn't need that update, but you got it anyway. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you, when he, when he, he measured and said, you know, and it came up 1.1 by 0.3. You know, that's uh, 0.33 all day long. Hallelujah. And that's like over half of what it was two weeks before. So we're, we're just we're right there. It's just like, it's just, it's just, it's just, together. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I won't show you all pictures. We, we could put pictures and give you a slideshow, but you... Well, we could, you know, we might have to pass out the barf bags. Wouldn't be a pigs in the parlor moment, but, you know, if you've got a weak stomach, you might not like it. Hallelujah. Well, let's go ahead and receive this morning tithe and offer you an offer envelope. Um, there's nobody here to do it. Where's Okay. And, you know, there's no envelope because they, they don't have the envelopes with us. They have them with them. All right. Writing a check. You're giving it electronically. Or if you've got some way to denote that you put cash in how much, uh, hallelujah. All right, Father, we pray over the offering. We thank you the people are blessed. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. If you're giving electronically, go ahead and send it. Praise God. Amen. Uh, the bag's in the, in the other room, sir. Oh, there you go. That'll work. Yeah, that's old school. Then have a little uh, felt thing in the bottom so you can't hear the, the change ringing in it. Hallelujah. Remember when, say when, when the coffer rings, the purgatory, a soul in purgatory springs. That is not biblical, by the way. That was you could pay somebody's way out of purgatory. So when the coffers ring, soul in purgatory springs. Well, we don't believe in purgatory. You go to heaven or to hell. All right. All right. Praise God. All right. Children's Church, you guys are out of here. You asked me to go ahead and open your Bibles to the uh, first book of Peter in chapter 1. Starting in verse 14, it says, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Through verse 19, by the way, 14 through 19. But as he which called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of lifestyle. Conversations, old English, for manner of life, conduct. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. For if you call on the Father, who without respect to persons judges every man, judges according to every man's work, 
past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Now, I'll just be honest with you. I don't understand people who go around saying, nobody gets judged, nobody gets judged, nobody gets judged, and there it is. Hello. And it's because there's a narrative that we, you know, and here's what happens in the church. We will adopt worldly techniques and try to apply scripture to them. You know, the, the world narrative has been for a number of years in, in, in our nation. You can't make anybody feel bad. Remember Dr. Spock in his book on child rearing? You don't spank a child. You don't tell them no because you make them feel bad. And everything's about not making a child feel bad. Well, we adopted that. And we can't everybody have, have everybody in the church feel bad. They can't ever be, hello, convicted or anything because that's, that's feel, they feel bad. Yet, John says in his first epistle that if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Now, the Bible says that God's not condemning us. You know, he's, he is justifying us. But I'm telling you, he will judge you according to your works. Your actions will be judged. Now, it doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It doesn't mean he won't redeem you. It doesn't mean he won't, it won't deliver you. It does mean that you can't walk around and live any way you want to live and not feel bad about it and just go around and say, I'm under grace. It don't matter. It doesn't work that way. When your heart condemns you, repent. Then you can feel better. Amen? Because the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses you from all unrighteousness. And it'll wash you clean. Hallelujah. So, without going way deep into that. And we don't want to get to the other side. You know, the second you do something, the, the hammer of God's coming down on you. You know, and squashing you like the coyote falling off a cliff. When the animal falling on top of him when he gets to the bottom. Everybody watched Roadrunner, didn't you? Who never watched Roadrunner? Okay, everybody's seen Roadrunner. Even the, I mean, they still play in Roadrunner cartoons. They're the ones we watched 50 years ago. They're the same ones. Why, why, why? You can't fix better than that. You mean, all right. And if you call on the Father, who without respect to persons judges every man according to his work, to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. In other words, be aware. This is not fear of being afraid of rattlesnake. It's an awe. It's an, it's an awe. I don't want to displease God. Okay? Now, I'm not working to achieve his favor. You have his favor. But in his favor, I don't want to displease him. Okay? I want to honor him. Okay? For as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. So we've been purchased. We're bought. We're redeemed by the blood. Amen. And we're to pass our time sojourning here in awe of the fact that God has redeemed us. We're bought with the blood. Amen? Kind of like an SNH green stamp. You've been redeemed. Some of you, oh, yeah, thank you. I was wondering how many, how many I had no idea what an SNH green stamp was. Yeah. Well, millennials, well, a whole bunch of folks, because they, they hadn't done SNH green stamps since what? The late 70s or something? Maybe even earlier, sooner than that? It didn't work, did it? No. Yeah, I remember that. And they, they, it was a whole different system. It, you know, you didn't have your little book. You didn't have your little book of, of redeemable things. All right. Five, Romans chapter 5, verse 9 tells us that we much more than being now justified, now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And so the precious blood of Christ, one thing it does for us, it justifies us. How many are glad you've been judged? Now, what's justified mean? Declared righteous. Then we like to kind of use this little, you know, play on the words. Justifies just as if I'd never sinned. Okay? And thank God that's what it is. We, we've, been, we've been declared righteous. It's just, it's just as if you never sinned. You've been made one with the Father. You've been brought out by the precious blood of Christ. Amen. Thank God for it. Not by works, lest any man should boast. Right. Amen? By our faith in the blood. Amen. By grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
you can't take that. See, we, 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 honestly, I just think we don't have enough people spending enough time doing the right kind of study in the Bible. We read too surfacy. And we present it too surfacy. See, we, we don't, you know, you, if you'll study Paul's use of the word works and James' use of the word works, in their context, they mean something different by them. We got people, I mean, I, there are so many, there are some people in the uh, new grace movement who say that James probably didn't New Testament canon because he disagreed with Paul and did not teach uh, grace like Paul did. Now they're going to start rejecting Bible because it doesn't line up with the narrative. That's a dangerous place. That means your narrative takes thir- uh, higher priority than what the what Bible says. That is dang- I've heard him say it. The first John 1 9 is not the all translators now agree that it doesn't belong in the Bible. It was it, you know and stuff like that. Why? Some bozo and you know just came up with who had that narrative and went and tried to find some way to discredit that particular verse in the Bible so that he could have people saying they need to repent when they sin. When you start trying to remove Bible, books of the Bible, verses of the Bible, to agree with your narrative, you're in great danger of being completely deceived. As a matter of fact, as I'm concerned, you're already deceived. Because you've got a narrative that you won't receive anything that the Bible may be contradictory to. And you refuse to accept that. And so you reject any scripture that doesn't go with your narrative. That's dangerous ground. So that's very dangerous ground. You're more concerned about the message than you are about the scripture. Message should be birth of Scripture that sustains the message. And really, the message should be the Scriptures, not a narrative. Hello. Meaning that when you come across Scripture that either is not necessarily contradictory, but balance or puts a parameter or a boundary on the interpretation of what you're trying to teach, you can't, you can't reject it or ignore it. Now, we've been justified, just as if I'd never sinned. Well, what happens if you sin? You need to get it covered. So it's just as if you'd never sinned again. Hello? You cannot live in sin. Now, I've always kind of put a qualifier on this. There are people who struggle with stuff who, who, want to be, who want to be free. Okay? God works with people. He, he deals with them. When you got people who are obstinate and then begin to justify their actions, there ain't nothing wrong with drinking. Ain't nothing wrong with, you know, having sex outside of marriage. As a matter of fact, we practice it in our church. Yeah, Ichabod's right. You know, advertise on your websites. We drink a little wine with our meals. Really? With all the issues we have with substance abuse in this country, and now you're going to advertise y'all drink? Because you want to be a cool church. And I guess, you know, you may, may want to go read Paul, Paul to Timothy and finally had to tell him, say, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake, for your alternate infirmities. He wasn't saying get the right Chardonnay to go with that kind of meat. Or cheese. Yeah, that's the Carolina crowd, the wine and cheese crowd. They were whining for a few games there too. Big time. Be whining again on Wednesday night too. Hate to say it. But we've been justified by the blood of Jesus. We're, and that saves us from the wrath that's going to come. Amen? So I'm glad the blood of Jesus, and I'm not putting in, listen, when I'm talking about doing things and walking with God, I'm not talking about you're trying to achieve a state where you become righteous because your works. Your works, the actions of your life, should be out, an outgrowth and an, an outproduction out of the life that's in you. That you're born again. The life of God's in you. That life should be producing fruit. Now, over in the book of Galatians, um, chapter 5, down there in verse 22 through 23, 
through 33 down there. He talks about the works of the flesh. Now, the works of the flesh, and he goes on and lists a bunch of works of the flesh. And when he gets done talking about the works of the flesh and such like, in other words, the, the context there in the, in, the, in the Greek language there tells us that that's not a complete list of the works of the flesh. And if some of you can read down there and look at there, oh, yeah, I've seen a few things that ain't in there. That must not be work of the flesh because it's not, no, 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 and such like. In other words, when you're catering to the flesh, these are the works of the flesh. But the fruit of the Spirit is. Now, the interesting thing there, but the fruit of the Spirit. Now, we have King James and a lot of translations capitalized Spirit. The Greek had neither capital or, or, or lowercase. It was, it was single, singular case. So you had to take the context of what was written to determine which way Spirit should be. Holy Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, or the recreated human Spirit. And see, the Holy Spirit doesn't bear fruit. Jesus said, I would that the Spirit bears much fruit in your life. Didn't he say that? Can you find that scripture for me, Bill? That, that, that the Holy Spirit would bear much fruit in your life? No, that's not what he said, is it? Jesus said, I would that ye bear much fruit. We are to bear much fruit, not the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a work of the Holy Spirit in us that helps cultivate and helps us, but we are the ones that bear the fruit. It does me no good for the Holy Spirit to bear fruit. It is my life that should be bearing fruit. And back over in Galatians again, Jesus said in John 15, 8, that, you know, uh, that you bear much fruit. Here's my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Okay. Now, when we get back over into Galatians, it says the fruit of the Spirit is. I submit to you, since, he, since it is our spirit that is to bear fruit, he's talking about the fruit of the recreated human spirit because you're washed in the blood, you've been declared righteous by the blood, and now you're born again. Your spirit is to begin to bear fruit. As you grow in grace and you grow in the things of God, you will begin to bear. So the fruit of the Spirit of the recreated. That's a, so we, say, if we put that in lowercase make reference to a recreated human spirit. Now, I'm not changing the Bible. This is a translator decision to put a capital S. The Greek didn't have it that way. Okay? Is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith or faithfulness, really the Greek says here, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now, these are the things that we see be coming out of our spirit. Temper ants. You've got people running around with a narrative. It doesn't matter what I do. I'm under grace. I'm saved. Yet, Paul writes and says to the church at Galatia that your spirit should be bearing temperance, modesty, control, self-control. How do you get, because I'm under grace, I can do whatever I want to do, and it's okay with God, and I'm still going to heaven? See, they, they, they skip all the stuff in between of <clears throat> getting saved and going to heaven and all the growth and the maturing and putting on Christ you're supposed to do with, I still get to go to heaven. And that may be true. I'm not even going to be definitive about that. Okay? But... What about the in-between stuff? See, the blood of Jesus didn't come to redeem you so you could stay like you were. It came to transform you. And out of the power, remember, now remember this, 1 John says this, that it is God who is all the while in you, work, no, that, Philippians, I'm sorry, who is all the while at work in you, creating in you both his, uh, the will and the desire to work for his good pleasure. That's Amplified, classic. Okay? to work for his desire and goodwill and pleasure. He's at work. He's working in you. I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit's not at work in you, but it is you that is to bear the fruit. No? Now, if I go plant corn and all this kind of stuff, it's not the fruit of Ed. The harvest is not the fruit of me. My working in there cultivating, gave the dirt and the seed 
the opportunity to what? Bear the fruit. That seed in the soil and the rain and the work around it able, enabled it, but it bore the fruit. When I walk in, if I go out there in the backyard and, and, and we've almost gotten enough peaches one time to get them before the squirrels got them. We got a peach tree. We've never been there because they never get to the point where we can get them because the squirrels get them. When about the time they're about ready for us to go out there and grab some, they're gone. I see a squirrel running across the backyard and I'm thinking, But we're in the city limits. We're a bird sanctuary. I.e., you can't shoot a firearm in the city. You can't go hunting in your backyard. I thought about having squirrel, some, some squirrel stew. Slingshot. So, but if I go out to that peach tree and get peaches off of it and bring them in the house, I don't go say, where'd you get those? Off the Ed tree. Ed didn't bear that fruit. The peach tree bore the fruit. I harvested it. I was a cultivator. Fertile. See, the Holy Spirit's a cultivator in your life. Don't you know the Bible says you're God's husbandry? You know what it says? Now, husbandry is an old English word that meant garden or tillage, farm. You know, farm just means a bigger garden. That's really what it is. It's just a bigger garden. All right? I mean, you know, now my, my wife's uncle he kind of had a garden that looked like a farm. They, her dad would take him over there, and they looked down those rows, and he, he, he plowed his rows with a tractor. And that was his garden. And they had beans, and they had potatoes, and they had, you know, uh, tomatoes, and they had corn. And they, he, he said, we're going to go get some, you know, and Uncle Bob would let them have food, you know, stuff out of the garden. And he, her daddy would get up and make Susie. Susie always had long fingernails. He said, yeah, going tomorrow to Dig potatoes. He's going to get some dirt under them fingernails. He just loved to aggravate her about getting dirt under her fingernails. And she gets so mad. Isn't that right, Susie? Anyway, I don't know if she's watching, but I thought I'd just jab her if she was. <coughs> Hallelujah. But I said, you look down there, that, that was a big garden, man. I mean, I went with her one time. I'm thinking, my God, that's not a garden. That's a farm. It'll take you a week to get to the other end. Anyway, but the Bible says we're God's husbandry, God's tillage, God's garden, God's farm. What's he doing? He's working in you. He's tilling you. He's cultivating you. The work of the Holy Spirit, and that is a work of grace in the heart of the believer. The Holy Spirit is working in cultivating you so that what? You bear much fruit. And then your spirit began to bear the fruit of love, joy, peace. Amen? Amen. Meekness, temperance, you know, all faithfulness, all these different things that were listed there. You know, God's husband, God's... Okay. So God is at work in you. But it is your spirit that is to bear the fruit. Hello? You know, we get people praying, Lord, give me patience to him. Give me to me right now. Well, honestly, patience is a working of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, long love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. No, there is no law. I mean, you're going to have to develop patience. You have to cultivate patience. You have to cultivate temperance, meekness. Those things are cultivated and grow in your life. Hello, they just don't happen. And the love of God has been shed by your heart by the Holy Ghost, but you've got to cultivate its working in your life. And you get plenty of opportunities for it not to. I went for Melanie to say something. I thought she was going to say something about that. Throw Jeff under the bus or something. Hallelujah. So she, see, she's been cultivating that love walk. I even gave her the opportunity to not do it, and she didn't do it. I, good job, Melanie. Apparently, I give a lot of people the opportunity to walk in their love walk. Hallelujah. Anyway, so we're justified by his blood. We can't live any way we want to because we're justified by his blood. There is a working of the Spirit of God in our life to cultivate us, but we are to bear this fruit. 
It should be things, things that are working in our life. And when we see areas, well, yeah, I'm justified by the blood of Jesus. But the beautiful thing about it is this. God didn't say get cleaned up and then you can come to me. It's you come to me and I'll clean you up. And then, listen, when you got born again, your spirit got born again. Your flesh is still a rotten tomato. Hello. And your mind was still messed up. Now, if you walk with the Lord long enough, but the things you need to do is only partially messed up. Hello. You can still wake up someday and have some of that stinking thinking. And the Lord was there, get into my Bible, get in the Word, get in the Bible, because it'll do a checkup from the neck up. Hello. You know, we, we hold our body in check. Put my body under. I buffet my body. I keep it under. Because I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit. One day it's going to get, it's going to get new. But until then, I got to keep that rascal under tabs. Oh, yeah. Now I let my body loose the other night. We were just, nobody knew what they wanted to eat, and I couldn't figure out. I'm like, oh, I want them, and nobody wanted what I wanted. And so we ended up at Burger King. <laughs> but when I've been diagnosed, now they diagnosed me with type 2 diabetes, I'm not supposed to have things like Burger King or French fries. When I had not eating, I hadn't been eating French fries. I just, you know, I've been really, really, really good. Well, I did. Next morning, I tested my, my blood sugar, and I was like out the roof. 100 points higher than the day before. Now, I went right back on the vegetables yesterday and like, you know, and, da, 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 and it was back down, over, back 100 points back down. I'm like, but I let your body loose. We drove over and we were near Wendy's. And I thought, how many carbs in a junior Frosty, honey? You know, the little bitty one? How many carbs in a junior Frosty? You know, it's like two bites. 26. I'm only supposed to have 15 for any kind of snack, and it's not supposed to be pure sugar. I said, how many in the one I used to get? The medium, the medium, uh, the, the, the small has 52. I'm only supposed to have 60 in a meal, not a snack, in a meal. The medium is somewhere around 80 or 90. And a large is over 100. And I would eat the large and then Janie's leftovers. And, I, you, know, I, I got to, you know, I got to think, you know, when I used to go to a restaurant, I would drink four or five glasses of Coke or sweet tea, which didn't matter. Sometimes more. Well, you've got 40 grams of carbohydrates in one glass of, of soda. I'm too, close to 200 grams of carbohydrates in, in, in soda. Plus the bread, the potato, the... We gravy. It's calorie and carb free. No. no. <laughs> well, see, I don't get too much gravy much anymore because I don't eat any potatoes. Get a little dab, you know, a little bit of gravy on, you know, kind of cut back on all that. But what, my point was this given the opportunity, your flesh will just go right back and do stuff. Oh, man. I mean, you're sitting there and, you know, I didn't get the, I didn't upsize. I always upsized. It was always the biggest order of fries and the biggest drink. But the second I did it, I paid for it. I'm not, I can't do that. Right back. Right back where I was supposed to be. Right back where I was doing, supposed to do. Can't do that. That's, that's a no-no. Your flesh will go. I mean, if you just let it loose, it'll do what it wants to do. It will be unconstrained. It will do whatever makes it feel good. And listen, a glass bottle of Dr. Pepper and a honey bun? Hallelujah. Get you filled with the Holy Ghost all over again. But that's my flesh. My flesh will let me speak in tongues if it could have that but Dr. Pepper. I got six of them sitting in the garage refrigerator right now, made with pure cane sugar. 
and I give them away. Cap, you want one? Nathan, Shannon, y'all want one? I think Nathan, they would want one the other day. I said, can I have, just, can I have a, a sip? And I'd put a little bit on my tongue. Oh, yeah. Lord, sit Nathan across this gulf. Yeah. With a sip of Dr. Pepper from the glass bottle. Ha! Yeah. Yeah. But see, I'm born again. Now, let's, let's get back off this natural uh, allegory side, back to the spiritual side. When you're a spiritual man, you're living out of your spirit, don't look for ways to cater to the flesh. We are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. We got too many people looking for ways to appease their flesh and not stay connected and appease or please God. I'm under the blood. Yes, you are. You've been washed. You've been cleansed. Amen? But it is that walk that comes out of the work of God because you've been washed in the blood. Now, I was about to say, way back before we got off in all this, and what time is it? Oh, it's only 1.45. No, we got, we're going to have to get after here in a minute. Um. God demanded your righteousness. His demand for you as a human being is to be righteous to stand in his presence. Y'all here, you go home. That is the demand of God. No exceptions. You cannot come into his presence without being clothed in righteousness. And yours is as filthy rags. You have no standing before God outside of Christ. And yet, in order to be in his family, he demands that standing with him of being made righteous. Law was given to prove you couldn't do it. You couldn't earn it. And as a, and in my, in my, when I teach and, and, and minister, we are not talking about you earning your righteousness. We're talking about working out of that righteousness, cultivating out of your spirit that's been born again. See, when you got born again, the life of God entered into you. You were washed with the blood. Now God empowers you to live in righteousness that he demands it is a false narrative to tell you go live any way you want to because you're under grace and i don't believe everybody teaches grace teaches that but there are people who, who take it to that extreme and they teach and they're the, some of the loudest mouth ones that are out there they lead people astray god did not empower you to stay like you were he empowered you to change so that your life now bears the fruit of love, joy, peace, okay, meekness, temperance, faithfulness. And so that your life now emulates and represents him. Can you say amen? And so we've been justified by the blood. Somebody say glory to God. Glory. We had that redemption through his blood. We'll pick up next week and carry on some of this. I'll tell you one of the things that one of the things we haven't covered yet is that we we uh we appease God, sin or judgment is appeased through the blood. See, when we stay under the blood, the just judgment we are due is appeased. Amen? All right. Let's stop here because we need to receive the Lord's table. Hallelujah. I got some kind of ushers. Hallelujah. Well, Benny's in Hawaii. And Joe, may, they could have freezing rain down where they were because it was coming, there was freezing rain coming up from south. Hallelujah. Let's get, in, get everybody in here. Let's line up. Let's go ahead and receive the Lord's table. Hallelujah.
Go ahead, gentlemen, and serve. Hallelujah. We thank God for the blood. It is the precious blood of Christ that has brought us to this place where we can stand before him justified. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are they, are they bringing the kids over? Or? Hallelujah. Blessed be our God. Thank you, Father. We do ask everybody if you can, if you've got just a few minutes after us. We are running late. We got to get out of here. Not so we can go watch the Super Bowl. Got got a little uh, information for you if you're trying to decide if you're going to pull for anybody in the Super Bowl or not. The quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, the, the replacement quarterback who replaced the one that was injured back in December is a born-again Christian who, when he retires from the NFL, wants to become a pastor. And one of the tight ends for the team also wants to become a pastor. They hold Bible studies and everything on the team. And so um, I'm not telling you to vote to pull for the Eagles, but I wouldn't pull for the Patriots if they were fighting the British. Yeah, they won that one. We don't want to win anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. So somebody put on the thing the other day. The Eagles is mentioned 21 times in the Bible. Patriots, none. <laughs> and somebody got cute and came back. Now, they called Brady the goat and said goats are mentioned like 42 times and the Eagles only 21. And I, I, I wanted to put back out there, but I stayed out of it. Yeah, but every time they mention the goats, to be sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, missing miss me. Where? Thank you. All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Trying to find those cute little crosses they put on these things. Yeah, a little cross on there. They got fancy. Glory to God. Makes it more spiritual. I, I remember the day when we used to put, we anoint people, oh, we make a cross on their forehead because that made it more. If you did it what they did in the Old Testament, they took a whole bunch of it and dumped it on their head. There weren't no cute little crosses on there. Hallelujah. The blood that has justified us, it's cleansed us. Of that new life, we cultivate the fruit of the Spirit, and we, and we emulate, and we act like, and we, we demonstrate the reality of God working in us. By his stripes, we've been healed. His body was broken, his stripes laid on his back to bring healing to us. Let us break and eat together the body of the Lord. This cup is New Testament in my blood, Jesus said. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Thank, for, thank you, Father, for the cleansing in the blood of Jesus, the keeping power of the blood of Jesus, the sustaining power of the blood of Jesus. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you, Father. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that washes me, makes me white as snow. Amen. Hallelujah. We speak blessing over you, life over you. May you, by the work of the Holy Spirit, produce a full harvest of the fruit of the recreated human spirit that honors and pleases God. In Jesus' name. May the patriots lose. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if that was in the spirit or not. 
we kind of got talking about what if, what if the Eagles win and that quarterback uh, is an MVP and he wants to go into ministry? He's got an open door in places no one else will ever get into. So I'm pulling for him. All right, Melanie's got, we got it now. We own it now. We love Melanie, don't we? You better love everybody. Until we meet again, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord bless you, may he cause his face to shine upon you, his favor, blessings. Remember, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We'll see you again on Wednesday. And until then, walk in his fullness, his blessings in Jesus' name. Everybody agree with that by saying, Amen. Amen.